As part of this series of Sixth Sense, I've been introducing some guests onto the programme to come along and demonstrate their own unique style of mediumship. And today it's the turn of my very good friend, ladies and gentlemen, Mr Tony Stockwell. Now, as I'm waiting here to connect, I just want to speak to the lady just here. Would we understand a grandmother who would have had like a breast cancer or a chest cancer there when she went to the spirit world? Yes, lady in the purple there. Just make sure it may be for you, maybe somebody else. But we'll listen to what Tony says and we'll see if it does work for you, my love. Is that okay? I know I've got a lady here. I feel that she's grandmother. I feel she's a bigger built lady. I don't know skinny ladies here. I've got a bigger built woman. I also know that she's a heavy chested lady as she was in the lifetime. I also know that she had a cancer here to the chest or even a cancer to the breast. But that's what I'm feeling. Are you with me? Breast cancer. That's it. I also have a sense here as the grandmother comes closer that there was no time to say goodbye before the grandmother or you and her did not say your goodbyes. Is that correct? Yes. That's it. She's proud of you because she thinks you're very bright or you're very clever. Isn't that lovely? Now, I don't know, if, darling, if you did more with studies than the rest of your family or you got to college and nobody else got there, but there's something about you and studying that makes her proud. Are you there with me? Yes. Is that, you sure that's correct? I'm doing it now. You're doing it now. Yeah. Doing it now is lovely. Now, if I can go back around three and four years ago in your own life, that for me feels like a real change around time for you. Things shifted dramatically in your own life with regards to friends, family, jobs, home. There's a sense here of everything moved around for you around this three and four year period ago. Are you I there? Moved. Yeah. You're moving is lovely, isn't it? I know that there was a connection here to do with dad or to talk to you now of your father. But as I talk to you here, darling, of your father, I feel that your dad would now be in the spirit world. You won't understand, yeah. that's it. Because I know your nan's lovely and although she wants to advise you of the things of life and as proud she is of your study. She's really saying here, for God's sake, tell her her dad's here. That's my feeling, you know, tell her her dad's here. Now, she brings your father to me. In some ways, um, spiritually, he feels um, a little weak to me there. So it could well be that he's not long past to the spirit world, that he's new to the spirit. Is that okay? That's it. Because I, I feel here that it's almost brought your nan's energy here to bring the man to us. That's it. So if it's true that so your father's not long gone, is that okay for you? Yeah. That's fine. Now, I must say to you that your father feels to me like a real gentleman as he comes in here. He's very courteous towards me. He shakes me hand. Hello, thank you very much for doing it for me. And uh, we'll, we'll see how we can get on. There's a feeling here, darling, where I'm just picking up this sense of pressure here against my chest when I speak to your dad. And I know it doesn't necessarily have to be a breathing thing, but it's pain in my chest with your father as I connect. Is that okay? Yeah, that's that's fine. It. Now, to me, my love, it feels as though your mother is alive. Is that okay? Yes. Now, I tell you why I feel that, because it just makes me sense that he wants to send his love to your mum. That's what I know. And let, I, let her know that I'm okay. Now, something here between your mum and your dad makes me feel here that they had either had difference of opinion or there was um, a little bit of argy-bargy between the two of them. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. But they don't feel like Mills and Boone that bit. It feels to me, my love, as though they were very different characters and from that they had, they had a bit of a ruck from time to time. Is that okay for you? But I know that he wants your mum just to know, tell her I love her, I knew she loved me, no matter whatever else went on between us in the lifetime, I always thought she was a diamond. That's what I'm thinking. That's right. Now, for some reason, my darling, he goes on to talk to me about that when you were 11, something really shifted again in your family to do with your mum and your dad and you had to go and spend more time with your dad or you had to you and your dad became as thick as thieves from the age of 11 is that significant to you is it absolutely true yes it perfect is. and I, I tell you my love he wants to thank you for cooking his dinner keeping the house clean those kind of very practical things that are far too much for an 11 year old child to cope with that's what i sense well, he keeps going on about it. Now, um, did your mother, darling, leave home when you were 11 years of age? That's correct. I think I was 12. I think you were 12. Yeah. I think you were 11, but that's fine. Yeah. But I do feel that he goes on about it. Your mum went off. That's yeah. what he keeps saying to me. She went off. And there, from that point, we became best mates, me and her. Me and her, that's yeah. it. Uh, so you're doing good, Dad. You're doing all right. He wants to put a gold medallion around your neck 
It could be a St. Christopher, but it's round and it's gold and it's round your neck. Not now, but no. it's around your neck in memory. I've got it, yeah. You've got it, lovely. But I feel it belonged to him or he gave it to you. That's what, that's mm -hmm. what it feels like. And I really feel that we're coming up in the next three weeks to the anniversary of your father's passing or his birthday. What is that? Yeah. It was three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. I'm ever so sorry, my darling. But I know three weeks I heard it and the anniversary. Is it of his passing, though, my darling? Passing. Passing. That's what I'd rather be. When you were a good girl and you brought flowers to his graveside on the anniversary of his passing, but I feel they were lilacs or I feel they were purple. They were purple, but I put them by his photograph. Okay. But they're purple flowers? flowers. They're the ones I want. Because I know he keeps giving me these purple flowers in my hands. I'm to hand them back to you. And I'm to say, I knew you gave them to me. And now I give you a bigger bunch back for my girl. That's fine. Your dad, right, he's lovely. But he keeps giving me the smell of tinned <coughs> pilchards in tomato sauce. But I either want to eat them out of the can because I like them. That's what I feel. All right. Is it you or him? What do you mean? No, that's my partner. Out the can, yeah. love. Don't have plates involved. Yeah. Definitely. That's fine then. You can't help who you're married to. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, your dad's dad is coming forward now. They like you, don't they? Now, as he comes forward, my lover, now, was his name William, your grandfather? He's still alive. But is his name grand is he yes. William? And that's your granddad? Yeah. So bear with me, love. Because he must talk to me about his dad. And then he says, that's William. So that's his dad. That's good, isn't it? Your nan's still here, but never so patient. I like her. She's nice. She wants to give you a row of pearls from her own neck. Your grandma. Look for old photographs. You'll see them. Have you got them? Nan and dad, you've done good, lovely things. Thank you very much for listening to me. God bless you. Thank you very much. Indeed. When Tony first picked me, I was very shocked at first because I've never had a message before. Um, and it was my nan. Her name was Ellen. She was quite a chunky lady. Um, some miserable, like old nans were, because she was quite old. But they got it dead right. Would we understand a grandmother who would have had like a breast cancer or a chest cancer there? My nan had breast cancer and she went into hospital and they tried to operate and they just opened her up and closed her back because there was nothing that they could do, it was too late. You and her did not say your goodbyes? I didn't at all, didn't have time. I just had a phone call to say that she'd died. I found it very hard because I'd like to have said goodbye because although she was a moany nan, I still got on very well with her. Everything moved around for you around this three and four year period ago? Well, I moved four years ago and I didn't like where I was living. It was causing a lot of aggro. So I moved and maybe that's what she's talking about because I'm better where I am now. Your father feels to me like a real gentleman. Such a gentleman. He would introduce himself, shake your hands if he didn't know you. He was, he was only 52 when he passed. Lovely, big, cuddly man. Done anything for his children. His children were his children and anything that we needed or wanted, he would do or get us. That's what sort of man he was like. I'm just picking up this sense of pressure here against my chest when I speak to your dad. My dad um, had a heart, his heart attack and that was a few years ago and then he had um, a heart disease which caused from the heart attack and he used to sit in his armchair all the time because he found it very hard to walk in the end because he got so big and that's how he died, he died in his armchair. They said he um, fell asleep, had a heart attack. Now something here between your mum and your dad, they had difference of opinion. My dad never got over my mum leaving. Um, she left me with my dad, she took my two sisters and left me. But my dad never got over that. Although he remarried six years ago, he still, when he passed, had photographs of my mum still locked up in his little case. And they didn't get on. And they never spoke since they he, she left, but he did still love her. He wants to thank you for cooking his dinner, keeping the house clean, those kind of very practical things that are far too much for an 11-year-old child to cope with. My dad and myself were very, very close. I did everything for him. I cooked, I cleaned, I did the shopping. And even when I moved out and had my first child, I still went back and done his cooking. And, I, and then when I couldn't do the cooking every day, I used to take him over a Sunday dinner every week. Thank you very much for listening to me. God bless you. I feel very happy I've heard from my dad because I actually got there too late when he passed. 
and I did sit with him for a couple of hours when he passed over by the side of his chair before they take him. Um, a bit uneasy about the fact that he knows everything that's going on in my house, <laughs> but happy. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please thank Mr Tony Stockwell.